Hey, this is Matt Ginoni. Here's my comic pull. It's for May 17th, 2015. Uh, since there, uh, 17. Since there's only a few books, we're going to do a uh, review also. Now, let's we'll start off with the only book that truly matters this week, which is Flash number 22, The Button Part 4. Lots of things happened. Uh, this is the final issue of the four-part series where they're guiding us to the Doomsday Clock. I'm sure you've probably seen some advertisements for it where you had the clock with the Superman logo, and uh, it's getting close to midnight. Uh, no surprise, since they threw this on the cover, we have the return to Jay, and the mystery deepens. Now, even though the mystery does deepen, they actually show us a little bit more of a confirmation of what's to come concerning... Uh, the crossover event and out this issue here was really solid the art was good story was good uh, it was great seeing Jay come back things happened and I don't want to spoil too much more than that but uh, I will say that this was a great four-part series I'm I was pleased to see it just being between these two books and not 18 other issues you know telling this story that only needed to be told in, in four issues. So this is kudos. Great job for that. Alright, next we have Batman number 23. The strangest crossover... I'm sorry, the strang strangest uh, team-up in history. We have Batman with Swamp Thing. Now, somebody gets murdered. Turns out to be Swamp Thing's father. And he teams up with Batman. Now, the best part of this whole book, I have to admit is seeing Swamp Thing, let me get to it, I know it's coming up, in the Batmobile. You know, that was probably the best part. Made my, it honestly made my day. And the issue was actually pretty interesting in that we got to see an interaction between two characters that we normally don't see. And the end result is in, in how Batman handled it. Overall, I... Even though it was kind of like a filler type issue, I, I kind of liked it. Uh, I, I, you know, I wouldn't mind seeing more issues kind of like this. Not necessarily in the terms of the strangeness, but in crossing over with unique characters. Also watching Alfred clean up after a swamp thing was kind of funny too. Alright, next up we have Super Sons number four. This is probably one of the best books that I've, I've been reading. The interaction between uh, Damien and John, Jonathan, have been great. You know, it, it's just, you know, Damien is just such a little punk. And he just pushes his buttons every time. And I, so I really, really like that dynamic. You know, the, he gives the kid no respect. But, you know, at the same time, it's like... You know, he's the son of Superman, but yet he can't even do half the things that he sh you would expect him to do. Overall, this was great. Great issue, great art, great story. The kid, uh, part of me is kind of like down on the fact that they had to give him a kid villain because there's, you know, there's two kids. But at the same time, I thought it was an interesting the way they used the Asmo virus and how, you know, they, they tie in Luther and all that stuff in there. So overall, I thought that part was all good. And uh, highly recommend Super Sons. This is definitely one of the best that's out there. All right, next up we have... Superman number 23. Now, this thing goes crazy. Uh, you have... Lois getting captured. You have... Uh, we find out who's pulling the strings in the background. Who has captured um, Jonathan. And... I don't want to give away too much other than I will say there's giant monsters. And some craziness. I, I'm very happy to see the craziness. I think it's definitely going in a very interesting direction and a very good direction. The artwork's just okay. But uh, to uh, yeah, it's just it's just okay. You know, there's some good parts and some bad parts. But 
This is probably the best part right here, that hand. Now, overall, this is great. This is probably the best Superman that I've seen in a long time. And I just hope that they can continue the course. And especially with the craziness that happened at the end. Justice League 21. This is boring. This is, to me, was just like a filler issue. Where it's like, hey everybody, watch out, there's some impending doom coming. Oh uh, yeah, I know, I've told you about this impending doom. Right from the very first issues of the story. And I've probably told you that there's impending doom coming every other issue. Uh, but uh, in case you forgot, uh, there's more impending doom. And that's basically what this issue was. So it, to me it was just stupid. Really boring. Uh, onto some other news. Uh, with I, I, at the comic store I grabbed the secret uh, empire. Went through it, got to the last page. And, I mean, this is a little bit of a spoiler, but I think it's okay to mention because it's already been spoiled on various news sites already throughout the day. But apparently Steve Rogers is back. And not, there's two Steve Rogers. There's Steve Rogers, Hydra agent, and there's Steve Rogers who's with a beard in the forest going, I ju I'm just looking to get home. So obviously there's something going on with that. Now, I mean, with him being in that kind of a state is what I mean. So, to all the people who blew their minds because they saw Captain America as an agent of Hydra, you need to check yourself because, you know, you overreacted and you didn't let the story progress and tell, you know, tell you the story before you went crazy. Now, do I think this is a great idea? I think this is a stupid-ass idea. I don't care how they sugarcoat it and make this thing viable. It's just stupid. I mean, the whole granted, the whole concept is stupid. You know, the fact. I mean, it's it's beyond words. The way they got there and what they're doing now, and you know, it's just like you know, they purposely push the buttons of the all these people out there who you know, like who. Had nothing better to do with their time other than complain about what Marvel's been doing. And granted, I'm one of those people who complained quite a bit about Mar what Marvel's been up to. You know, and, and that's why I'm not buying Secret Empire at all. And But when I saw that, that final page of Steve Rogers, I was just like, Oh my god, they're going to get him his memory back. He will lead the charge. And then... Miles can now kill Steve Rogers, Captain America because there's two of them. You know, before they technically they couldn't have done that because there's only one, and that would have meant killing the real Steve Rogers. But now they can kill him. And even if they even if they they made it worse by saying, "Yeah, that's Steve Rogers," and as Hydra, that's the real one, and this other one that's through the woods is some clone or uh, some I don't know some some brainwashed blonde-haired guy who has no superpowers they'll give him superpowers they'll and then suddenly he'll be the captain america in no time you know so it's just like oh god this thing just holding just gives me this headache and then and then there's one more issue of secret wars because nick spencer and the editors can't figure out how to tell the goddamn story right you know it's like oh man i just feel sorry for everybody who's buying this bull crap because I mean the, the the ending now lays out it's laid out for you it's ridiculous on the plus side Netflix has announced the Witcher TV series that is going to be kick ass anyways that's a poll that's the comic reviews let me go let me know what you guys picked up what you guys are looking forward to reading the most we'll have more stuff later so until next time